individuals is there to help people from anything. So, which pubs play what music? Where's good to go? Right. Um, where do I find a taxi? Where's the nearest bus stop? I think I broke my ankle. I feel <laughs> sick. Have you got any water? All sorts of different yeah. things. Have you got any plasters? Although we're not allowed to give them, you know, there's a bit of an issue around plasters. Uh, yeah, so just, just, yeah, yeah. You're allergic to whatever. Yeah, yeah. Um, but basically, it's a friendly, smart, smiley, welcoming face to the village. And it's there to help people, whatever that help might be. And it doesn't matter who you are, you can come up to the angels. There's two teams. Usually one will be walking around the village and one will be stationary somewhere else. There's a reason right. for that, it's just important so we know where each other is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and that way, you know, you'll see us walking through and we'll like to pick something up, but also you know there's somewhere to go if you need to see somebody so you can have that static place. And this is a voluntary service? It certainly is, yeah. Um, we do have shift leads because we have to have key holders to get into the yeah. Gay Foundation and that kind of Fine. thing. Um, but the man and woman power that's in the Village Angels is fundamentally driven by volunteers and it has been since we started last year. So the intention is to provide a service to, to our huge and colourful array of people who come down here every weekend yeah. who get lost, who lose their way slightly or just need information like said where's cruise or yeah. where's the nightclub or yeah and it can be anything you know the other week we were out and about we were just around the corner there's a lad really sheep who's saying around in the corner just walk over are you all right it's my first time coming to the village right. i'm on oh, my own gosh. i don't know anybody i'm 17 years old Drum yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah oh, oh god <laughs> but obviously having a conversation and obviously it's important to remember if somebody tells you yeah. what they are and you know about we used you know, to get me and my best friend from school who is like my gail on oprah feel free um, and we used to get dropped off by my dad at Brannigan's at the Royal Exchange. <laughs> we used to walk up Market Street after about five minutes, just to make sure he drove off. <laughs> just to come there, yeah, just to have our own um, look. Yeah, it's just, yeah, the thought of doing it now. Oh. But what's fascinating as well, it could also be a 60 or 70 year old person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the same process as well. Yeah. No, but you know, it's young, old alike, and that's a wonderful thing, and in between. Any hassle? Um, sometimes, um, I had a bit of grief off some women the other week who were just being offensive up and down Canal Street. Um, we're there sometimes when people are in crisis, so you know some of the things that people can be quite upset, you know, things can be yeah, yeah. quite heated. Um, we yeah. We're not there to intervene in fights, we've got great amounts of police doing a fantastic job, that's their job. If we see anything that's volatile, it's 999 like anybody else should do, it's an emergency yeah, yeah. situation. We're only there to help people that we know can do something about otherwise it's whichever service. But one of the most important things is sometimes we might walk across somebody who's had too much to drink or whatever it might be, or yeah, they've just yeah. been beaten up and they're led on the street. That's before one of the emergency services oh. gets to them and it stops them becoming a further victim of crime, getting attacked in another way, getting robbed, whatever it might be. So it's kind of that level of stuff as well. So it's almost like an in-between <laughs> service. It's a city-wide you know, like ban for everyone. I believe that that's where they're heading. Right. I think that's where they're heading. I just think we're stage one. And I think that's the danger for Manchester as a city. Yeah, that's, all right. that's the fact I've spoken to people, my customers up in Glasgow, and even my customers that come to AXM here. And I'm not necessarily talking about long distance travellers here, but even people that come from Bury, Wigan, you know, the, the locale, if you like, who come into Manchester on a pay weekend. They might not bother on a normal weekend. Why are you here? Because it's a big night out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Would you still come? if you had to finish at three. And a lot of them have said, no, they wouldn't. Really? So all their venues out there, even restaurants and bars that close at 12 go, don't affect me. No, it does. Because the package is yeah. what we're offering. And the package we're, we're is- We're the aren't we? And exactly. Yeah. And that package includes restaurants and early bars that yeah, you yeah. then go on to later bars. Yeah, yeah. You take out part of that package, people may not bother coming. And there's some the lunch people who are who make money from the ones exactly here. and the hotel industry etc etc people travel from lots and lots of people come from london and mm. from or what's the other option we close at three o'clock an hour away down the m6 you've got birmingham it's got a nice tidy little gay village there now these days and they right. spend a lot of money on it and they're up till six where are you gonna go yeah, yeah, yeah. so how do you sign this petition look really it's on the public web uh, network uh, right. Go onto the Public Club um, Manchester's uh, website, it's on there, or go onto your bar and it should be on their Facebook page. And if it's not, go into your bar and find out why it's not. It's definitely on the Canal Street. Uk it website. is, and it's on the AXM site, and I know it's on a number of the bars. So I'll, I'll make sure it's on the screen site. right now. Sign it, and as soon as we pass 
I've got money in my saving. As soon as we pass that magic number, then we can Which demand at least a debate. What's, well, what's the magic number? It's 5,000. Which should be, uh, should be a dollar. I think there's always criticism about the stage. In my opinion, you can put the dollar on there and someone's still going to kick off. Well, she's passed it, doesn't she? <laughs> she's lost it. <laughs> um, how do you how do you do that? How do you kind of how do you plan that stage? We have a limited budget in a charity. Right. You're dependent on people's availability. Yeah. It is a bank holiday weekend. Right. We have Leeds and Reading Festival the same weekend. Yes. We have Creamfield the same weekend. Okay. So the avail we are very much driven by who is available. Yeah, yeah. You also have to remember that our main stage capacity is only around ten thousand people. That's what I said to everyone. There's and no way that can have Kylie on there. Kylie on there. Yeah. Um, you know, you probably could have Elton John on there. Yeah. The, the, the risk to having an act like that in terms of the demand and the crush, I don't think the, the Council of Health and Safety would be very happy with this. So there are limited factors round about the stage, there's limited factors round about the budget, and then there's limited factors round about availability. Yeah. And I think when you put all of those together, the lineups that Manchester Pride have produced over the years, uh, I think, have been excellent. Yeah, I mean, we always giggle a lot. Hazel Dean always gets ruled out, <laughs> but that's just, it's a staple isn't it? Hazel Dean, Carla Renner, I don't know they but um, for what you said tonight, it's like, it's like, we should be in stuff like that, so she's, she's going on crazy. We should be in the Monday last year, right. and, and was brilliant, so we're pleased that this year she's on on the Saturday. She's a big singles on yeah. that as well. Cool. And that's, again, a good, a good Manchester lass who is happy to support the LGBT community. And so she should, so she should. Um, so, for you, what's your kind of pride highlights of years gone by? What's your kind of... <laughs> it's a really guilty secret, but uh, I loved Toya two years ago. <laughs> I still love Toya. And, and Four Percent Piano was a bit of fun as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I suppose. Um, last year, when Steps were on, there was comments about you couldn't get into the arena. Yeah. Me. Um, that's going to happen every year, isn't it, really? Because it can't. It is. If you put the, the level of acts on that people want, or, you know, uh, at the end of the day, the, the site capacity is uh, 45,000. Right. Um, the main arena capacity is 10,000. So there's always going to be uh, people who are disappointed and yeah, can't yeah, yeah. access the main stage. We've tried to help that by putting the screen in Sackville Gardens so that right. the headline act is now streamed into Sackville Gardens. So the ceiling will go. Straight. Yeah, so you know, the, we can accommodate another five or 6,000 people there. They're not seeing the app live, but they're able to see it on the screen. Um, but it's just simple arithmetic. We, I, I think there's something special about having played in the village. It's the main gate area. Area yeah. in Manchester, um, and I don't. I think if you took Pride out of the village, it would potentially lose something. But it comes with a huge um, amount of experience. Well, Please background to the album. What's the um, what's the theme of the album? Obviously, it's soul, but it's um, what's the you know? Is it is there a theme to all the songs, or do all songs tell different stories? The song is sorry. The album is about love and relationships, and that's not just relationships with partners, it's about family, friends, any sort of situation in life. The songs are quite ambiguous in the sense that I don't name names or anything like that because I want you to listen to that album or you to listen to that album and think of your life and your experiences because that's how you connect through music. You don't, there's certain songs, you know, which I've heard before where they've actually physically named the person in the song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You take away the audience's connection from those songs the minute you do that. So they're all um, autobiographical songs, they're all yeah. songs from the heart. Did you write them or did you give, so is it Sam Dickinson on the song, on the credits and stuff? I co-wrote every track and I write, with, I write with a selection of different people from someone that's multi-platinum in Europe at the minute, to band members, to general up and coming songwriters from the North East. So you're from the North East, you're from Newcastle, yeah. there's a lot of... Um, Love for you up there. We've we saw you at Hoochie Coochie, yeah. which was one of my all time favourite gigs, and I would love to take Mark James. We should take, honestly, we will go on a little tour, a little road trip, and um, you will love it. Um, so, you did a tour with the um, with the album, and you were telling me before at home when we were getting ready and showing pizza and stuff. Um, what's the theme of the tour? What's the... the theme is the origins of soul. So, soul music comes from gospel and it comes from the old R&B clubs. And then what, that, what we're planning on doing with that is 
We're not putting the show into two, but we're trying to incorporate both those elements throughout the show and actually make it into a show, not just song, finish, song, finish, song, finish. Because for me, when you've got a full band behind you, that's a very lazy way to work. Right. A very, very lazy work. And I think if people are paying money to come see you, they need to have their money's worth in a show.